Mozambique's Gorongosa National Park was the envy of Africa. Wildlife drew tourists from all around the world. But beginning in the 1960s, a man-made catastrophe slaughtered the animals until it was said there was nothing left but mosquitoes and landmines. In 2008, we followed an American entrepreneur who dreamed of returning a wasteland to greatness. 14 years later, Greg Carr has something to show the world. And as we told you in December, we couldn't resist a return to Gorongosa when Carr sends out invitations like this. The story will continue in a moment. Just come and sit at a sunset by the lake in the center of this national park. I mean, time stops. And you get a hundred colors of yellow and a hundred colors of orange, and then the dusk sets in. And then a flock of birds go over the water, and there's a hippo over there making a noise. And there's an impel over there. And, you know, it's like, well, I could have been here 100,000 years ago, and it might have been the same. <laughs> Greg Carr's wonder is almost like disbelief. A million acres of Africa reborn. When I first came here in 2004, I could drive around with my Mozambican friends all day long. And if we were lucky, maybe we'd see one baboon or one warthog or something. Now, we drive around and it's an ocean of wildlife. You know, come around the corner, there's a herd of elephants. You know, go the other direction, there's, there's some lion cubs. 10,000 water buck, and I say to myself, you know what, nature can rebound. The rebound is in Southeast Africa, near the center of Mozambique. Here, 28 years of war from the 60s to the 90s killed an estimated one million people and wiped out 95% of the wildlife in Gorongosa for food and profit. As the war raged in the 1980s, Greg Carr was a tech entrepreneur who'd made a fortune perfecting voicemail. He quit business to devote himself to human rights, and in 2004, he met Mozambique's president, Joaquim Chisano, who made a wild pitch. And he said, look, please come to Mozambique and help us, and we want to restore our national park. When we flew over this, I said, this is it. When we met Carr in 2008, his nonprofit foundation had signed a 20-year contract with Mozambique. His plan was to import animals from all over Africa. Well, step one, we had to remove 20,000 traps and wire snares that were left in this park, left over from the war. Get rid of all those because when I first came here, I mean, we think we had five or six lions, maybe. In a million acres. In a million acres. And the lions that we did have, most of them had three legs because they had stepped in a trap or something. And then second, some of the species were just gone completely. So we went on a process. First, bring in the herbivores. So we bring in 200 buffalo. We bring in 200 wildebeest. We bring in some zebra. And then when you've got enough herbivores, then you're going to want the carnivores back. So we reintroduced leopards. We reintroduced hyenas. The lions, all by themselves, their numbers just took off. So from five or six lions, when we started, we now have probably 200. Gorin Gosa's lion conservation is urgent because since 1950, Africa's lion population has fallen from half a million to 20,000 due to habitat loss and hunting. We saw how Gorongosa is protecting its lions on a mission with park veterinarian Antonio Paolo. Okay, I'll shoot now. Paolo fired a tranquilizer dart right on target. And a 300 pound lioness led us on a chase. Reverse, give space, turn on, turn on. She left us behind but she couldn't outrun the sedative. There she is. Yeah, she's there, she's sleeping. She'd be out about an hour as Dr. Paolo changed her failing GPS collar. The signal goes to headquarters where they track the prides and herds. A bit of ear was nicked for genetic tests and then 
there was a surprise. You think she's pregnant? Yeah, she's look like pregnant. And there is the future of the park. Yes, the future cubs of the park. Yeah. Later, she awoke and headed out with her future cub. I never imagined it would go so well or so fast. In 2018, we did an aerial survey. You know, so counting only the big animals, we counted 100,000 large animals from the air. Thrilled as he is, it wasn't wildlife that drew this 63-year-old Idaho native to Africa. In 2008, he introduced us to the 200,000 people living around the park, survivors of the wars, living on a dollar a day. People had nothing. I mean, they didn't have clothes. They were wearing rags or they had made clothes out of tree bark. They were eating insects and trying to catch mice. And, you know, that's when it struck me. Well, this national park's going to have to help the people. Today, Gorongosa National Park employs 1,600 workers. Tourism brings in cash, which goes to the people and to the park. And Greg Carr has partnered with the government on health care and education. Car is the biggest donor, but U.S. foreign aid kicks in about six million a year. We now work in 89 primary schools, which is every single school that surrounds this national park. We are training 600 school teachers right now. Now think about how difficult it is to create a school system when you don't have school teachers that know how to read and write because of generations of war. Now something we really focused on as step one was really vulnerable girls. Now, a lot of times what happens in the poor families around here, a girl turns 13 or 14 and the family says, well, it's time for her to get married. Now, it may not be what they actually want, but they don't, they don't think there's another choice. And this is what happens. And, you know, she marries a farmer and that's it. So we started something called the Girls Club. There are 3,000 girls in 92 after-school clubs. The program is led by Larissa Souza. Why is this the job of a conservation park? Why not? It should be the job for everyone, for everyone. Education is for everyone. What's it? The clubs provide the resources to get the girls into high school. And it gives students an answer to our question, which five years ago wouldn't have made sense. What do you want to be? We have a teacher, a nurse, a conservation park ranger, and another nurse. Another nurse, yes. When we started the program, they didn't know that they had this choice. And now they do. Now they do. This land belongs to these people. They've been here forever. It, it's their animals. It's their land. It's their trees. It's their cultural and spiritual heritage, right? It's an idea that came from my hero, Nelson Mandela. And the idea was to create a human rights park. You know, what, is, what does that mean, right? A park that cares about the people, a park that belongs to the people. So instead of a park turning its back on the people, a park opening itself to the people and say, this is your park, these are your animals, these are your opportunities. We saw those opportunities on Mount Gorongosa, which was stripped of trees during the wars. Here, Carr's nonprofit foundation is giving away coffee trees. 868 family farmers working for themselves are earning far more than ever, so they can't plant trees fast enough, which reforests the mountain. Carr's foundation buys the beans at above the market rate and built the farmers a roasting plant. There's no better example of Carr's model for lifting people and healing the wild. It's working. But the last 14 years haven't been sweet music alone. Since we were here in 2008, yes. there have been enormous roadblocks to this project. That's right. If I had known then what was going to come. <laughs> what came was another civil war in 2013, and then in 2019, a cyclone leveled 100,000 homes. Okay, there was the six years of war, and then the cyclone. When Cyclone Idai hit, 
basically every one of our employees became a first responder. So in other words, oh, there's an elephant right there. Is uh, there? I, I, well, there certainly I is. I just have to stop and say hello to the elephant. We couldn't find the wildlife in 2008. And, and now they're interrupting our interview. And now they're walking <laughs> in on the interview. <laughs> well. Was there ever a time that you thought to yourself, I did my best, but this just isn't going to be humanly possible? Not for a second. Not for the, one second. With the cyclones, with the return of the Civil War. I just think every time something like that happens, it just makes you more determined, not less determined. And when you've got people suffering in a war that need help, or people suffering in a cycle that need help, you know, you're more committed. You don't lose commitment at a time like that. We saw commitment in the rangers who protect the park. For the flora and the fauna, they sing, we will die for our park. Part of what they protect are endangered species, including this mammal with a bottomless taste for termites. Pangolins are hunted for their scales, which are prized in folk medicine. Veterinarian Mercia Angela told us that pangolins ride on their mother's backs. Oh, hello there. But we found any back will do. That's funny, he just naturally goes right up to the shoulder and hangs on your back. Yeah. Powerful tail. Tail, yeah, the tail is very powerful. <laughs> they also are used for are protection. <laughs> I'm surprised they're so docile. I mean, this is a wild animal. Yes, it's a wild animal. Success, eh? <laughs> but for us, the most interesting animal in the park <laughs> is Greg Carr, an entrepreneur with the empathy to see, the humility to listen, and the optimism to act. His business model is creating a new ecosystem where animals that were hunted are suddenly worth much more alive. How much of your personal fortune have you put into this? <laughs> well, well, I'd like to keep that a secret, but unfortunately, I think, uh, you know, you could probably do the math and figure it out. It's more than $100 million. My message to anybody with money is, um, I mean, what are you going to do? Stick it all in your casket? I mean, why not, <laughs> you know, why not enjoy the joy of philanthropy? I would say to the billionaire next door, go out and enjoy spending your money to help some people. Find your Gorongosa. <laughs> go find your Gorongosa, and it will bless you more than you can possibly ever bless it. <laughs>